If you've been following my channel for any length of time, you'll know that I've done several projects and upgrades to the boat since I've owned it. And most of those projects have been planned, meaning I have a list of upgrades I want to do to the boat. And as time goes on, I cross those items off the list. And there's also times when projects are not planned and not on a list. Uh, what happened was my neighbors uh, purchased a brand new stainless steel stove for their boat. It was shipped from Vancouver to Prince Rupert and when it arrived it didn't quite fit. So they were telling me the story of this purchase and showed me the stove and then uh, I said well let me just see if it might fit in my boat which I pretty much knew it would because I'd looked at this stove before and it was something that wasn't even on my list but they got a really good price it was a, a big discount on the stove which is why they purchased it at the time they did so uh, I just paid them what they paid plus the shipping that they paid and now I have a new a new stove project my stove works well it's getting a little tired looking for sure it's over 30 years old but uh, I thought, uh, yeah, I'll just save them the hassle of having to ship the stove back and I'll have a, a new stove in uh, my boat. The stove that I have in the boat now is stainless steel, three burners, with an oven. It's made by Hiller Range and it runs on propane for its fuel. It's gimbaled, of course, so that I can cook while I'm sailing. and. Like I mentioned, nothing really wrong with it. I've, I've been very happy with it. Uh, it's, it is getting a little old looking in, in some spots, but uh, no issues and uh, it, it's a, been a very good stove uh, for the time that I've owned the boat anyways. And I think I've heard good uh, remarks about this type of stove. As I mentioned, the stove runs on propane. So I have a propane tank out in the cockpit in a locker that is solely dedicated to this uh, unit. First thing to do obviously is open the tank out in the cockpit locker, which I've already done. And the next step is to turn on the solenoid, which is over on my electrical panel over here. So I'm going to go do that. The next thing that I do is I turn on my propane sniffer, which is just behind the stairs here. I have two propane sniffers on the boat and they're just down here. I'll show you after. There's a little sensor here and there's another one that's just below my propane fireplace. One of them's right down here, you can see, and the other one looks the same. So when I operate any propane systems on the boat, I turn that sniffer on to make sure that there's no propane leaking uh, into the cabin area. The way that you light this stove is very simple. You just get your lighter, put it next to the burner, turn the knob on, and uh, the, the burners are running now, so I have three burners here to light the oven. There's a pilot light in the bottom Once the pilot light starts It'll just take a second to warm up and then you'll see the burner turn on there is a thermostat in the oven so once it reaches the desired temperature the burner will stop, but the pilot light stays on and the burner will kick on and off as needed for the temperature you've asked it to uh, stay at in the oven. So it's a, a good oven. I'll turn that off. And that's about it for the operation of this. Uh, I do have a, a insert that goes here so it gives you a little more counter space. Right now it's underneath the new stove so that I could keep it up off the carpet. But uh, it's just the same material as the rest of my countertop. And it just goes on top here and a little more counter space for you if you're not using the stove. I often end up just putting one of the cutting boards here on top of uh, the burners if they're not hot. And that's it really for the stove. Um, I'll show you the new stove and uh, tell you why this model works for me. So here's the new stove. You can see it still has the protective wrap on it and 
Uh, it's made by Dickinson. The model is Caribbean. It's got a nice uh, cutting board that comes with it that falls into place. So this is all flush. It's got a little cut out there on the side. And there's your two burners. You've got a large burner here and then the smaller burner there. And it'll look nicer once I get all the protective wrap off. That just sits right in there flush. So I probably will use this more now uh, because the other one sort of sat on top of my old stove and it rattled a bit. It was a bit warped. You have the oven, you just lift the handle. Oops, and it's a little bit in the way for my stairs. And it's got a very large space uh, for the oven space. One nice thing that this stove has that mine doesn't is it actually has a broiler element on top. So when you set it to broil, it's actually broiling from the top uh, element as well. It's got a lock on there, which is nice. My other one doesn't have a lock, but it's fairly stiff spring-loaded type door, but a little uh, extra security having the lock on the handle, so you have to lift. One other nice thing about this stove is that you don't have to light it with a lighter. I'm just going to have to turn it. It'll spark automatically. So there's a spot down here for some 9 volt batteries. Probably only have to replace them every year or so, I would imagine at the most. And I imagine uh, you could still light it with a lighter if you had to. But uh, I just tur I'll just be turning it on and it'll spark itself and uh, light up right away. So that's just a quick look at the new stove. So the drawback of buying a stove that somebody else purchased for their boat but is here and readily available to me is that I didn't have a chance to compare it to the other models. The make of the stove is Dickinson, the new one, and the model is the Caribbean. The difference between my current stove and the Caribbean is that I have three burners right now and I'll only have two burners on the new stove. I'll tell you why I'm okay with that is because in over six years I don't remember a time I've used all three burners at once. Maybe one time, but I, I couldn't even say for sure. Because you're still limited on your space here and I've always had two pots uh, on the go at the most. So losing that third burner wasn't a big concern for me, but what was a concern was uh, the oven size because I'm very happy with the oven size I have now and after looking online I saw that the next model up from the Caribbean for Dickinson is the Mediterranean now that one has three burners it's also deeper uh, than the Caribbean so I thought with a shallower stove I thought maybe I'd be losing oven space between the Caribbean model and the Mediterranean but I'll quickly explain the dimensions. The height of all three stoves, my current stove, the Caribbean and the Mediterranean is the same, uh, with very close to the same. Uh, the width between all three stoves are the same. The only difference between the Caribbean model, which is the two burner stove that I got, and the Mediterranean, which is the three burner stove, is that one is shallower and one is deeper. So with that said, now my biggest concern was oven space inside. Because it was going to be deeper, does that mean I get a bigger oven with the Mediterranean? Could I make the Mediterranean fit here before I commit to buying this two burner Caribbean model? So I did some other quick measuring and as I mentioned the height and the width was the same but the depth for the Mediterranean came out to about here, just past this return here. And that was a little, it was gonna look a little big in this space. The depth of the Caribbean was gonna come right back to there. I'm not sure if you can see the tape measure. So I'm gonna lose, you know, about inch and three quarters at the back. And I only have the two burners. So as I mentioned, my biggest concern is oven space, and it turns out that the Caribbean and the Mediterranean are identical in every way except for the depth, 
and the oven space is actually the same as well. And of course, the, the difference between the two models is three burner versus two burner. I hope I didn't complicate that too much, but uh, anyways, the Caribbean is going to be slightly smaller than this stove in the depth only and have two burners. The Mediterranean would have been too big. It would have come out past this return here, which would have looked too big for the space. And the oven size is identical between the two new models. And uh, I don't need the third burner. So that's why I was happy with going with this stove after uh, it was presented to me. And it's just going to be a easy removal. I've only got the gas line at the back that I have to disconnect. And I'll take this bar off, of course, to make it easier to pull the stove out and put the new one in. Well, here's the mounting nut for the new stove, and it's a bit smaller. It actually can pull right out of the old bracket, so I'm going to have to put the new one in, the new brackets in, uh, to accommodate the new mounting nut. Ever since I've owned the boat, I've wanted to refinish uh, the cupboards in the galley and under my nav station. I'd looked at all kinds of options to uh, give them a bit of a fresher, brighter look. And the easiest and the cheapest option was just to paint them. So I sat up all night looking at things and trying to size it up and decide whether I should or not because now with the stove out of here uh, this is the time that would be best to do it because once I drop the stove into here it locks in and it would be it's possible to get it out but it, you have to push these tabs back and it'll be difficult so why put it in if I'm gonna uh, eventually paint this area anyways and uh, brighten it up a little I know this is all behind but it ties into the galley over just out of sight here and since the stove is out right now I decided by the time I went to bed that yes I'll do it so I did some uh, research on what paint I could use exactly and uh, I have to sand it well first I have to clean it all and then uh, so I'm going to use a like a degreaser it's a TSP I think it's called and that'll just give it a really good clean. People use that on driveways to clean the grease off before they redo their driveways. So it's also recommended for this kind of stuff. And since this was a cooking area, it's probably got a little grease on here that I couldn't get off with regular cleaners. So I'll do that first, and then I'm going to sand it. You just have to do like 150 grit, uh, from what I heard, or what I've researched. And I gotta fill a little few spots here and fill some other spots where the holes were uh, not lined up with the new mounts and then uh, I'll start my first coat of primer I think it's gonna look good uh, I've never really been super happy with the uh, cupboards I'm not sure if you can see it's like it's the laminate material then it's like the teak trim it just looks kind of 80s so I'm uh, hoping with a nice, you know, it's a bit of an off-white I got. It's uh, going to look nice, I think, with the teak rather than this sort of this yellowish looking uh, laminate. Anyways, I'm sort of getting ahead of myself. But uh, yeah, so I'm going to just clean this whole area up. I'm going to paint the bottom here too. It's just the uh, uh, gel coat, I guess, but that should just be no problem. I'll just have to degrease it, sand it, and and uh, throw a coat of paint on there too.
Well here we are the next day and I didn't do a lot of filming once I started applying paint because it's just basically that, just applying paint. I'll tell you what I did though, I applied two coats of primer to the area and then the first coat of the actual paint which is uh, a melamine finish, it's heavy duty, it's by uh, Sitco I think it was, is the type of paint I'm using. and. I think it's going to turn out okay. I've just got this area done. Uh, it's, it's got a really nice feel to the finish. It uh, And look, it, it looks like that's the way it was. I think it's going to really brighten things up on the lower part portions of the boat. Once I get the next coat of paint on, then I'll let it dry and then I can put in the new stove, which is sitting right here out of camera view. So I just hooked up the gas line to the stove and luckily for me I didn't need to change this fitting here. It actually uh, was the proper fitting for my existing connection. Before I put the stove in I just want to make sure this isn't leaking at all. So obviously with propane you don't want to test that with a match or anything. So what you can use is just some soapy water. I've already turned the tank on outside. I've turned on my propane sniffer and you can see the sniffer just right down there. So it's right below. Uh, one thing I haven't done though is I haven't turned on the solenoid. So I'm going to do that first. Solenoid's on. And now the sniffer's still on. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pour a little bit of soapy water. Just rub it around here. And if it's leaking, I should see some bubbles. So you can see all the bubbles there from the soapy water and I don't see anything bubbling. I'm just going to watch that for a minute and apply a little more. I won't keep recording but I just wanted to show you guys what I'm doing to uh, make sure that that fitting isn't uh, leaking at all. Well, that wasn't so hard. <laughs> it's just, it's a bit heavy, 80 pounds, trying to lift it up and over. I think it's on both gimbals. I better double check. It seemed like it just fell into place. It's in that one for sure. And it's in that one for sure. We'll fast forward one week and the new stove has been installed and you might also notice there's been a little bit of an upgrade to the rest of the galley area. So here's a little closer look at what I've done. I've applied the proper primers and paint to the whole area and I think it really brightens it up. There were a few little pieces of teak trim in here and down here but it didn't look that great really. It was either go all teak or no teak I guess. So having that little bit of a mix didn't look that great. On the cupboards, on the upper half of the boat, the drawers and everything are full teak, so it looks much nicer. And I think this really brightens it up down here. It's uh, something I'm really happy with, so a little uh, bit of an upgrade. The reason I did this now was because while the stove was out, I had to make a decision that either do it now or probably never do it because once I put the stove in the new one I probably wasn't going to pull it out just to paint and I needed to get all in behind here uh, to do it properly. That's uh, what sort of kick-started the painting project and I'm going to continue that on uh, basically waist level down 
it's mostly uh, what you saw before with a few little pieces of teak trim. But the main thing right now is just to get this little area done so I could get the stove in and uh, get this area up and running again. So let's take a little closer look at the stove and see what the differences are. So I've just adjusted the camera to have a better angle on the stove and you can see with the cutting board in it's a really nice uh, flush surface now for uh, extra counter space which is really uh, nice to have. I'm sure I'm going to be using this a lot. The only complaint I have about this cutting board is that when you install this rail at the back, that's for the uh, pot holders, is that the cutting board didn't quite fit in so I had to notch it out. So if you can see that. I had to cut two little notches here just so that it fit with the uh, rail on at the back. But now, once I did that, it just fits in perfectly flush. So uh, it's going to be a nice extra counter space. Once you pull that out, you can see that it's got the two burners. And with the two burners, you have these pot holders. They just sort of jam on here. And then you can hold your pot in place to stop it from sliding this way, of course. The stove is gimbaled, so when you're sailing, it stays level. Take those off. This burner is very large, and then there's the smaller burner, so this will be better for uh, when I'm uh, boiling a pot of water, uh, say for spaghetti or something, or, or any time. It, it's got quite a few flames here. So one thing that's different on this stove compared to my last stove is that I don't actually have to get a lighter and light this. Push it in, turn, and it lights. And do the same for the other burner. And I know it's just a little thing, but it, it will make it a little bit more uh, functional and easy to use. So here's a little better view of the oven. And you can see it's quite a large space, definitely larger than the space I had in my other oven. And the rack has two positions. Probably the nicest feature about this oven over my last is that it has a broiler, an actual burner up here that's a broiler. And my other one didn't have that, it just had the burner on the bottom. There we go. That's your regular element for baking. And then you've got your temperatures. Of course, it's, there's a thermostat in here, so you can reach your desired temperature and cook just like a normal oven. If I turn this off, and if I go to broil, you'll see that there's the broiler on top. When you're cooking with the oven, the manual says you need to remove the cutting board on top. I guess there's probably some venting that happens on the uh, burners up top, so uh, just a note for anyone that might be looking at this model. Here's a little closer look at the latch. It's designed so that you can mount the latch on either side. This was the side that was closer. This, there's a little bit more of a gap on this side. And you just install the latch on the side you want and the receiving end is right there. You can see I've just mounted a little shim. And then you just close it off. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed seeing the stove and galley upgrade and I know it's uh, just some paint and the new stove, but when this is all you have, it's kind of exciting. And uh, there's a bit of a fresher look here now in the galley, which is quite nice to see. I know the boat's from 1982, so I can't make it look new, and that's not what I'm trying to do. Just trying to make it look a little bit nicer and make day-to-day -day living a little bit easier with things like the new stove. Not that I was planning on getting it, but... Uh, Sometimes things happen and it works out uh, great. So with that said, uh, I'm going to have to do some cooking on this stove. And I thought maybe I could get Devlin over to make up a meal. Uh, what's your vote? Do you want to see a salmon recipe or a halibut recipe cooked on the new stove? So let me know in the comments below. And we'll see you guys in the next video.